All right, let's do this third video of the PAP K3 Plus. And what we're going to do is we are going to connect it to a TV. As you can see, I have it plugged into the back here. And I have it connected to the front of this older Sony flat screen CRTV. Now, this TV does pretty good with retro gaming. But the reason I chose this TV is simply because it has this easy access panel to the front where I can plug in these standard definition audio video cables. So the device is powered off. We will cut it on here. And once it boots up and gets into the dashboard, you will notice that even though it is connected in the back and to the TV, there is still nothing on the screen. And that's because you need to go down across the bottom here and go to the little gear icon, which is like your settings. And once in there, you're going to go down to TV mode. When you click on that, you're going to have to go to NTSC. And the screen goes blank here. And you are up and running on your TV screen. And the camera doesn't do it exact justice. It does look pretty good on this bigger screen. It is standard definition, so don't expect the world. But there you have it. We are connected to our TV. So we're using the console to back out, even though you can't see anything on the small screen, now you're navigating on your larger TV screen. You can go and either pick one of your emulators here and one of your ROMs, or you can, let me focus, go and pick one of these games right off of the thumbnail. So just for uh, ease, we will go with the first emulator here which is that Capcom arcade ROM simulator and we will go to the very first one which is AVP for the arcade now let me focus my camera in um, these words look kind of blurry but once we can get past that the game itself does not look bad at all on the TV so you can thoroughly enjoy this little handheld console connected to your TV and using a larger screen. Um, let's get past this intro here. Let's put some quarters in by hitting select. And you can hear it just fine. I do have the volume cut down because I don't want it to talk over me. But with the volume cut up, this thing sounds just fine. The emulation runs smooth and there you go. We are playing the arcade game using the console as a controller on our larger screen TV. And it should connect to any TV that has a standard definition input capability. So I'm not going to attempt to play this thing too thoroughly just using one hand, but I will demonstrate that even though the colors on the TV aren't as crisp as they are with the um little built-in screen it looks just fine it's perfectly playable it doesn't lag or um the response and the buttons whenever you hit the button you can tell that it's instantly doing what you want on the screen so there's no problem with the emulation just because it is connected with the av cables to this tv so let's back up out of that and what i'm going to do now is I'm going to transition to the part of the video where we connect this thing to a PC and um, transfer some files back and forth and show you how to operate it that way. So this has been the section on connecting it to a TV. All right, let's go ahead and connect this thing to a PC. Now, something I read quite a bit online was people complaining about their handheld not connecting to their computer or their computer not recognizing it, and especially with Windows 10. Now, this is a Windows 10 PC, as you can see here, 
and um, I had no problems getting mine to connect. Now, I do have a little bit of problems with my Windows 7 uh, PC, my utility catch-all PC, um, and ironically enough, that is what the operating system says that it's most compatible with, uh, and more people have had better luck connecting it to a Windows 7 PC. I don't know. Uh, it's just my personal experience with this device. So I can say that maybe a valid con to this is connecting it to a PC reliably. Like I said before, I do use a aftermarket or a non-bundled USB cord and I found that that actually helped a lot because when I first tried to connect it, I had a lot of problems with it. I didn't know what was going on. I thought maybe I was in the same boat as everybody else. It just wouldn't connect to my Windows 10 computer and it was actually the bundled USB cord just wouldn't connect or it would drop the connection in the middle of transferring data and stuff like that. So what I do is I leave the device off, I plug it into the USB port, and then I cut the device on. And once it goes through a short little boot up screen, um, it will show you the USB connection and you'll hear the satisfying click on Windows and there you go. Now mine does say there's a problem with the drive. Do you want to scan and fix now? And I don't do that. I just let it automatically connect to the device. And mine it shows up as USB drive F. Yours might show up as something different, but that's where mine is located. Now here are the root files for the handheld documents, games, music, pictures, video, your instant saves, and so on. Um, this is where you would transfer, either take stuff off, because this thing came loaded with like over 600 games. Um, a lot of really good stuff and uh, some stuff that really wasn't that good at all. So I take stuff off and put stuff on through this interface right here. Now, something that I wanted to show is I did take some pictures and video with the built-in camera, and here is where you would see those. Now, paying homage to YouTube's viral roots, I just had to take a cat video. So, yes, this is the quality that you're gonna get out of this little handheld device as far as the built-in camera and it's not exactly HD, but like I said, it would be entertaining to a child, say, if you bought this for them. Um, the picture, it's of another cat. We have two, and as you can see, uh, it's just really grainy and um, almost has like a shade cell cartoony kind of look to it. So I guess you could kind of say that's neat. But anyways, that's a picture and a video that were taken with this device. And those pictures and videos actually look a little better on that small screen. Now let's get into the good stuff of putting some stuff on this device. And naturally the way you would put something on is just reversed to take something off that you don't like. So I made this little file here, P-A-P-K, and this is where I had um, an example of stuff that I wanted to put on this device. Now, um, as far as your music files, I found this free, royalty-free, shouldn't break any YouTube copyright laws, audio file, that was on the web and is called Audio Bringer Video Game Music. So it is just something to show you how this operates. So I'm just going to simply grab it and bring it over here to the music file. It will transfer. I um, also have my intro to my YouTube channel as an example of a video file. Now I selected the Indiana Jones Temple of Doom 
game manual as a PDF and I'll explain that in my next part of the video why I went with this game and also the Indiana Jones Temple of Doom NES box art as one of my pictures so let me see if I put that in the right place yes I did so in the pictures here and in the PDF I'm using the this NES game here as an example and like I said I'll explain that in the next part of this video so as far as ROMs and games I know that is a gray point or a gray matter as far as legally what you can do with NES ROMs of official games so this is not the video the time or place for that what I will say is awesome is since this is a handheld emulator and like I said it came loaded with a ton of games whether the company had the right to put these games on here or not I mean it's in China I don't really know what they follow and what they don't but I bought it on Amazon legally <laughs> so it, like I said, it comes loaded with a ton of games already. But if you did legally want to put some NES ROMs on here, there's what you call homebrew or homemade games or games that are made by independent companies that are still compatible with the Nintendo Entertainment System. And this company here that I found by Googling free NES ROMs and free legal NES ROMs and just going through and just trying to find something to show you how to use the emulator and put a ROM on and off of it. I found this website called Gradual Games and it is a original NES homebrew company and check this out free ROMs that they made so they are giving their games away and if you look into especially this game here Legends of Aulia it's a neat new homemade NES ROM so and they gave it away on their website so you're not breaking any kind of laws here so let's use that as an example so I got both of their games that they released for free I'm gonna grab these here I'm gonna take them over to my game file go in my game file grab them again and put them in the Famicom because like I was saying this is marketed in a way where Mega Drive is your Sega Genesis Super Famicom and Famicom of, are your Super Nintendo and Nintendo so once it's in the Famicom here um, it will show up in the list of games and like I said this thing came loaded with a ton of these things so you've just added two free original legal NES ROMs to this little handheld emulator and that is just part of what makes this thing so cool is you can experience retro in a handheld way very effectively so that is connecting this thing to your PC finding your root files and just a basic overview of what they are and how to get stuff on and off like I said if you had something on here that you didn't want um, present let's just go with Super Famicom um, there's a ton of stuff there uh, let's find one that maybe has not as huge of a library um, like I said, I mean hundreds and hundreds of games. So let's see what Mega Drive. There's probably a ton there. I mean, I've not even been through all this. Okay, the Game Gear. The Game Gear didn't really have a whole lot on there. I don't even know what uh, this game right here is. I haven't even had a time, uh, had a chance or time to test it because of look at all the content that you have to go through. So I want to take this off I just simply cut it and paste it off to the side and I can put it right back on if I want to but I've just altered this uh, handheld as far as what is in the Game Gear library so that being said uh, this has been connected to a Windows 10 PC which is a contention point and like I was saying might be one of the 
few cons that I would highlight is sometimes it is difficult getting this thing to connect to a PC. I do have some problems with my Windows 7 PC. So what I always do is I go here and eject the drive safely. I just don't want any problems or I just don't want this thing to not be able to connect anymore because it would be a shame not to be able to get my stuff on and off of here. So after that, I power the device off and it's been safely ejected and I can connect it another day. So let's move on to the final part of this video and that is firing this thing up and showing all the work that we just did to it.